You're listening to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. Danny and Jason had many discussions and debates on the back porch while making pivotal investment moves with assets. That's right, with trading cards. They welcome you to the back porch and right into those discussions about current sports news with a fresh and unique twist. So come on and join us. Welcome to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason. She calls Danny. And we got a full show for you today. First, we'll get into a little bit about March Madness, the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, Major League Baseball Brewers um, uh, off to a hot, hot start. But first, Danny, right into March Madness and where, oh boy, the Final Four has been truly uh, set uh, for both the men's and women's. But first, Danny, let's get right into the women's, man. Um, I have to say this. I watched both of the uh, semifinal games, the first being the Iowa Hawkeyes against the LSU Tigers and where the Hawkeyes prevailed 94-87 over LSU. Uh, and obviously, man, this big story here is about Caitlin Clark uh, going for 41. There was some bad coaching in this game, uh, in my opinion. And that is that by uh, Malky, the LSU uh, head coach. And we'll get into that here shortly. But again, Caitlin Clark goes for 41, uh, 12 assists, uh, and ultimately seven rebounds. Had a game for you, game for the ages. I think she needed to win this game. Her and the Iowa team needed to win this game in order for Caitlin to even be considered I think among the greats. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think you can compare to the likes of Cheryl Schwoops or the Host Claws or uh, Cheryl Miller. Cheryl Miller. Uh, you gotta. I think you have to win a, a championship. Oh, I mean, to and even be in, in the conversation. Mm-hmm. And granted, yes, you know. She broke record scoring and, you know, tournament records and assists and all that stuff. But let's be real, man. We we measure greatness at times by the number of championships. She will be remembered if she doesn't win a championship. But to have that conversation, uh, to be among the greatest, eh. Now, she wins a championship in WNBA and possibly multiple championships in WNBA conversation can be had but let's just be real man the show millers and oh man they were just lethal <laughs> in college yeah. basketball but danny let me just say this too about the bad coaching that i experienced and that i watched um and i think it was more so in the third quarter it was some in the first quarter i saw several times and where uh the lsu tiger Lady Tigers, they just didn't get back on defense. And so there was some easy buckets there in transition uh, by Iowa uh, multiple times. And I think that really kind of helped keep Iowa in the game because there was a point in time where Iowa started off high. They started off with the lead. LSU comes back. But then having these easy buckets really helped. The other bad coaching move here, um, I feel, is I don't know why LSU kept going under on these picks. I kept screaming. I was like, man, please fight and go over on these screens, man, uh, 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 over on these picks. So that way you can be a little bit more into Caitlin. And granted, Mm -hmm. she had a great handle. But you got to fight over that pick, man. You got to go ahead and go over on that pick. Because you're just giving her way too much room because she can shoot. Yeah. She can shoot, man. So that to me, I saw that way too many, many times. And I think that is one of the reasons of why Iowa prevailed. Here's another reason why Iowa prevailed. Iowa's other players, as Shaq will call them, the others, um, played pretty well. And they played beyond their season averages. So one of the guards, her name is uh, Sydney Folter. She typically averages eight points a game. She ends up with 16. There was another 
guard here, K. Martin, uh, Kate Martin, excuse me, who typically averages 13 points a game. Uh, and she she balls out and goes for 21. Iowa goes on, they prevail. They move on to play uh, the UConn Huskies. Uh, and we'll get a little bit more into that, Danny. But what say you about this versus LSU-Iowa game? Jason, it was a great game, man. It lived up to all the hype. I know these women were under a lot of pressure uh, for this because all eyes were on them. They they broke a lot of records mm-hmm. uh, from from a viewership perspective. And mm-hmm. this was one LSU will be kicking themselves for a long time because, like you said, Iowa got out to, I think it was like 17-9 lead. And LSU just looked flustered. And then all of a sudden, they got their legs under them. And they started playing. And I'll say this, too, about LSU. They missed a lot. I mean, a lot of bunnies, as they call them. Like in a the whole pandemic. lot. And that was another thing where I think Angel Reese at one point, she was going, I think in the second half, she was like one for 12. And you know Angel Reese is down low. So if she's not hitting them, and the point guard, she missed a ton of shots. So if you look at it from that perspective, from the offensive side of the ball, that's where LSU has got to be kicking themselves because there are a lot of opportunities they did not convert on uh, where they are just point blank shots they just missed or they forced it. So on the defensive side of the ball, LSU looked like the Milwaukee Bucks <laughs> on the three from the three point defensive. <laughs> You know how the Bucs have played (laughs) three-pointers where they consistently do that. And like you said, with Caitlin Clark, you rather her go in and have a two-pointer or drop it off for a two-pointer versus giving up threes because you know she's going to shoot it and she's more likely going to make it based on her percentages. Can't take anything away from Iowa, man. They came to play. Um, They weathered the storm against LSU. And they ended up prevailing. Congratulations to Caitlin Clark and Iowa Hawkeyes. They're advancing to the Final Four. Where they go ahead and face the UConn Huskies because the UConn Huskies went ahead and prevailed against uh, the USC Southern California Trojans, 80 to 73. Beckers had 28 points, Edwards with 24. Uh, Danny, let me just say this, man. I watched a good portion of this game and I was just really enamored at the execution that uh, the UConn Huskies had, Uh, how they got into their sets, how they consistently ran their sets, uh, and how their offense really flowed. And this was a hard-fought game, Mm -hmm. uh, quite honestly, up until the end here. Uh, And let me just say this, man. I got to give some props to – uh, Juju Watkins, who had ends up with 29 points. Uh, she is a baller. Uh, she's a freshman. Uh, the USC Trojans are going to be very good moving forward. If you were to ask me who am I picking between Iowa and UConn, I'm going UConn. And I'm going UConn because if you give them a week's time, Dino's going to go ahead and re- scout the heck out of the other team. I really see UConn, I can see UConn dominating this game, man. And I just, and this is because what I mentioned earlier about the other Iowa Hawkeyes balling out of their mind in some instances, doubling what their season average is. I don't see that happening against the Iowa Hawkeyes. And I also see uh, them doubling, UConn Huskies doubling uh, Caitlin Clark to get the ball out of her hands. I'm not going to say a blowout, but I can see this being like a seven to 10 point game. Mm-hmm. What say you about UConn uh, USC game? A uh, tough game, man, where it was going back and forth, and ESPN can have had a better two game slate with all their stars on display. And this isn't even considering South Carolina, the undefeated team in the tournament, who's undefeated. <laughs> them yet. Yeah, this is a, calling them out. These are two great games. 
And I thought USC had, there was another instance where USC, where they weren't giving the ball to Juju Watkins enough. I think, I think she could have exploited UConn even more. And this is where I'm concerned with UConn against Iowa. The way they played Juju Watkins, Juju Watkins could have easily had 40 in that game. Caitlin Clark, if they can't figure it out quick, this could turn on them fast. So I think it's going to be a really tight game. Um, Paige is going to have to bring it. Mm -hmm. This is kind of her moment because if you remember before she got hurt and hurt her knee, she was kind of that mm -hmm. top player in the NCAA. Mm -hmm. And then she tore, she had the ACL injury. And then now she's kind of in the background. So this is her game to shine and kind of steal some of that spotlight away from Caitlin Clark. And if she's going to do it, this has to be the game. Iowa may pull this one out. Oh. And the only reason I'm saying it is because of the way they played the other night. Like you said, though, there's a week here in Gino, or a couple of days. Gino has to get ready. And you know they've been scouting already. You know they're preparing ahead of time for both LSU and Iowa. So they're going to be ready to play. I'm just afraid of do they have enough offensive firepower to keep keep up with Iowa. It should be a great game and definitely looking forward to Friday night and watching that game. And we'll just say this real quickly with South Carolina advancing uh, to the final four, 70-58 over Oregon State. Uh, they continue to be undefeated uh, at 36-0. and 0, uh, And man, they are running through competition, man. And Texas uh, loses against North Carolina State, uh, kind of like a Cinderella, if you will. Uh, 76 66. Uh, so you have South Carolina against North Carolina State. That is going to be interesting, but I think South Carolina will uh, win handily. And now, Danny, just as we're ta we talked about the women's, we got to talk about the men. Uh, and I'll just say this, man you know, the fact that we're talking about the women and the fact that we know more of the names in the women's game, and these games have been incredible. Uh, we're talking about a viewership of the Iowa uh, LSU game being that of like what 12.3 million uh, viewers, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, the men's side, uh, it looks quite interesting in where the final four, uh, you have uh, Purdue against North Carolina State, uh, UConn against Alabama. And for Purdue, this is the first time they've been in the final four in, uh, since – Man, I think it was like 1980, North Carolina State since 1983. So we're talking about decades, uh, which is cool, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool. Uh, this Purdue-North Carolina State game is going to be quite interesting where you have Edie and uh, DJ Burns, man. And so uh, Burns is is really making a name for himself. Uh, kudos to him for uh, having these side hustles, side business in terms of the vending machines and everything, T-shirts, whatever the case may be. Uh, and Edie and Purdue, man, they continue to move forward here. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game, uh, and I can't wait to watch it. What say you, Danny, about uh, this matchup? Well, Jason, I don't know what they're going. North Carolina State is going to do with Edie because they don't have anyone. Burns is six nine, and Edie's a he's a force, man. He's been playing. Man, he had forty in his last game, and he's playing – he's like a man on a mission. And this is what I was th – they're playing like Virginia did when they lost to the 16th seed and they came back and won the national championship. That's what Purdue is doing, and Edie is leading the way. And Burns can also do the same thing on the other end, though, and that's where they got to get Edie in foul trouble if they have they want any shot to beat Purdue. I think NC State's guards are better than Purdue's guards. It's going to be – how can they – what can they do to stabilize Edie to get a victory here? Because uh, I think they can, I think they definitely can beat Purdue, but it's – Edie's just playing on a different level right now. And mm -hmm. if they can get him in the foul trouble, that's, I think, the key to winning this game because otherwise it's going to be a tough road for NC State to knock out Purdue. Mm -hmm. I agree there. Uh, and then you have Alabama against UConn. This is going to be interesting, but I, I think UConn might end up getting them uh, here. What say you about that UConn-Alabama matchup, Danny? 
the only way UConn would even get close to losing is that three point shot because mm -hmm. Alabama's going on these streaks like they did against North Carolina and they get they're really streaky. And if they get going and they can knock down a couple threes and get their confidence, uh, Illinois was right there with UConn and then decided for, to let UConn go on a 30 to zero run in that second half, which ended, you know, became their demise. Um, but Alabama, UConn should beat Alabama. Uh, the only way you, Alabama has a shot is, like I said, they can get hoist up a whole bunch of threes and they start making them and put some pressure on UConn because UConn hasn't had that pressure. They've blown everybody out. I think they've won every game by like 30, or close to it. Uh, so this is another game where they should win, but I'm hoping for a good game, at least something where it's like 10 points instead of 30. So you have something, something competitive to watch. And now on to some additional basketball news here, Danny, where we actually have a couple of announcements uh, of uh, some new – uh, Naismith Basketball Hall of Famers, one being that of Vince Carter, the other being that of Chauncey Billups. Uh, Vince Carter uh, was uh, NBA Rookie of the Year uh, when he was a rookie, uh, and that was back in uh, 1998. Uh, and uh, he is an eight-time uh, All-Star, um, and he averaged 16.7 points uh, a game in his career uh, and from an international standpoint he won a gold medal in the 2000 Olympics in Sydney and, and also uh, 2003 FIBA uh, American Championships. Vince Carter goes on to the Hall of Fame and where he's the only NBA player to ever play in four different decades and then we also have uh, Mr. Big Shot Chauncey Billups who uh, goes into the Hall of Fame, and Chauncey is a five-time NBA All-Star, uh, where he averaged 15.2 points a game, 5.4 assists uh, in his NBA career. Uh, he's the considered the sixth best free throw shooter in NBA history. He also is uh, a champion uh, in where uh, he uh, took and led his uh, 2004. Detroit Pistons to the uh, NBA Finals and won, and he was uh, named the MVP. Uh, and so, Danny, congratulations to both uh, Vince Carter and Chauncey Billis, but I got a bone to pick here, man. Just as we're giving them the flowers, we're giving them congratulations. I think it's time for the NBA to have their own Hall of Fame. Uh, we say this every year. <laughs> because there's always been some kind of controversy or some kind of side-eye look in some of these uh, Hall of Famers uh, mm -hmm. being inducted. I guess we, when you think about the Hall of Fame, you think about the Hall of not only very good, but the Hall of Fame, Hall of Excellence, not the Hall of kind of good or Hall of Good. I think we're at that point where it's a hollow good. Um, I can see Vince Carter getting in, quite honestly, uh, because of the international play. Um, dunk contest, you take that out of the equation, but it's still a contribution to basketball. He's won internationally, played four different decades, only NBA player to do so. Okay. But also he was Air Canada. And so you have to think about from an international perspective, from an NBA standpoint, I mean, okay. But Mr. Base Shot, Chauncey Bills, I don't know about, man. That one kind of, he's, he's a cha NBA champion, M MVP, okay. But you know, there's other MVPs who, M finals MVPs who didn't make it in. Uh, one that comes to mind, I believe, is Cornbread Maxwell. Mm -hmm. for Boston Celtics. Congratulations, but the, it's time for the NBA to have their own Hall of Fame. What say you, Danny, about this Hall of Fame class? Uh, first, I want to say congratulations you know, to the finalists. And if you don't have anybody, there's no reason to just put people in just because, 
right? And yeah, Chauncey Billups, when you read his numbers and you look at his career, we we grew up during his career, you know, it took him a while to actually hang on and actually get that to become, you know, the player he was eventually in Detroit. And it wasn't like he was he was good and he could knock that shot down, man, and play great defense, but he wasn't someone that, yeah, when you look at the Hall of Fame or you know, this, it's like, mm, I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. So when you have when you feel like that, that means you 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 err on the side of no. And well, Danny, to that point, I just I still don't understand why Michael Cooper is not in the Hall of Fame. So if Chauncey Billups gets in, yep. I mean, come on, man. I think Cooper has what five rings? And he played and in an era where he was defending the likes of Larry Bird, Dr. J. Some of the best players, man. Yep. Not only that, not only that, but he could shoot the three. And nobody could wear them socks like Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so the point here is if Chauncey has gotten in, if they don't put Coop up in there, come on, man. And yeah. not only that, he was part of the famed Showtime Lakers. Coop doesn't get in. There's something wrong. Mm -hmm. Something wrong. He should have been in. Part of the thing, Showtime Lakers, five-time champion, defensive player. I think Leaf is like defensive player of the year, or he was consistently in the running for that. Come on, man. Yeah. So, um, and Danny, on to a little bit of, of NBA here and where the Milwaukee Bucks take an L against the Washington Wizards. I'm not even going to read the stats. I'll just say this. This was without Dane. They played tonight against the Memphis Grizzlies not look like in what I'm seeing, quite honestly. I didn't even watch the game. But what I'm seeing statistically, the up and down here, I just don't have any really confidence that the Bucks are going to make it even beyond the first round. I can see them being the first round exit again. If they make it out of the first round, they'll definitely it'll it would be a second round exit. What say you, Danny, about the Milwaukee Bucks? Tough L last night. Giannis had a triple double, um, but you don't lose to the Wizards. I'm sorry, that's just, <laughs> not this time of the season. These are the games you should be blowing these dudes out. The Wizards have nothing to play for. You gave them a reason to actually give them hope <laughs> to win a game here. And the other key thing last night was Joel Embiid returned, depending on seeding, because the Sixers are currently in the eighth spot. So with the playing tournament, if they sit in that seven, eight spot and they win that first game, the Milwaukee Bucks will be facing the Philadelphia 76ers, who looked pretty good. Joel Embiid looked pretty good in this return last night. And you don't want that matchup. Not to say the Bucs can't beat the Sixers. I think they can, but it's just one of those where it makes the road even harder now that the Sixers fell so far. And they're sitting right there where, you know, it's either the Heat or <laughs> the Sixers waiting on you. And you can't come in and play in the way they are. So hopefully they can get get this uh, ship righted before the season ends. They have a few games left and um, get some momentum going into the playoffs and not have these stumbles. And, Danny, real quickly, Major League Baseball has started. The Brewers uh, started off 4-0, took an L uh, earlier today. But, man, they are on off to a good start. Uh, the Pirates 5-0 leading the division right now. The Brewers has some young, some young players. We'll see what happens, man. Uh, Yelich, uh, I want to say he hit a home run in, in the first series here, but man, I'm, let me just say, Brewers need to keep going here. They need to keep going, get every victory they can, because uh, there's no telling what's going to happen throughout the rest of the season. Their pitching has been pretty good so far, and Jackson Churio hit his first home run today, the 20 year old. So that's good. And like you said, they, this is where you got to stack those victories while teams are kind of getting themselves and kind of figuring things out because they are young and there's going to come a losing streak here. You know how baseball is. It's very streaky. So take advantage while you can right now. I know Pittsburgh is playing lights out. Didn't see that coming. Lot to, lot to uh, look forward to. Thank you for joining us at Backports Talk Podcast. You can also join us on Twitter by tweeting us at 
back underscore podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, which is backporchtalkpodcast.com. You can also email us at backporchtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember that there's enough hate in the world. So go ahead and spread a little love.